Princess Peach Showtime might be a quick and easy game, but it also had a lot of boss variety. Actually, a lot more than Mario Wonder, that is. So today, we have a list of 13 different bosses from Princess Peach Showtime, and we're going to rank them from the worst boss to the best. Now, the way I am judging this criteria is I'm also including difficulty into my analysis, also how fun the boss is, the arena that you fight the boss, and just the overall atmosphere all around it. Of course, this list is my opinion, so it is more than okay for you to disagree with my picks, but thank you so so much for tuning in today. Stop what you're doing. Let's see how many people we can get to subscribe from this one video. Princess Peach demands it. She wants you to subscribe, so subscribe. We are trying to reach 300,000 subscribers and you can help do so. But enough yapping and let's get on to the video. This is the top 13 bosses ranked in Princess Peach Showtime. The first boss we have on this list is Dark Baker. Now, I had to come up with some of these names because outside of the main bosses, they didn't really give us names for them. But Dark Baker is pretty much just that, a giant dark version of a baker who is trying to have a bake-off against you. As he's making his bland cookies, you're trying to make your fancy ones, but at the same time, he's trying to jump and ground pound on you as you and the sparkler are trying to make cookies. That's really about it. You're just baking cookies and placing them on the table, and you just gotta watch out for him because he's trying to ground pound on you, and he just bakes his cookies extremely slow and obviously has no love in those cookies. I mean, look at them. They, they look horrible. Now, honestly, I get it. This is probably as much as they could do for a boss battle with the Patissier Peach. So yeah, it makes sense. It's just not that fun. Coming in at number 12, we have the UFO. Now, this was kind of disappointing because I wanted there to be a really fun boss battle with this. And really, they just make Peach turn into a giant and then you fight him pretty much the same way you fought everything else. You're just punching his fist back over and over and over again until you get close to him and then you'll do a series of I don't even know if I should call them quick times but just random button presses where you'll throw him then he'll charge at you where you don't have to do anything besides you know just let Peach catch him automatically and then Peach will chuck him and throw him again which is once again just a button press so yeah there's not a lot going on this is more cinematic if anything and I don't know I felt like this was very boring for what they could have done with the boss battle with Mighty Peach. Coming in at number 11 we have Phantom Knight. Now Phantom Knight is actually not even a bad boss battle by any means because the rest of these are pretty decent believe it or not so number 11 phantom knight is pretty much just utilizing the parry mechanic once again with sword peach just jumping at the right time where right before he stabs you with his lance you will just jump allowing you to do a flip on his head bounce off of his head and then attack him from behind and you'll do this three times there are some enemy segments where he'll throw enemies at you or place you on a 2d plane which once again it's not that difficult you just do an up attack every time there's something above you and then it's just rinse and repeat it's not hard whatsoever and he does pretty much the same exact attack and doesn't really switch it up but it still is a fun fight for your first couple of times number 10 we have the thorn plant and this is the first boss of the game but i actually really enjoyed this one I thought it was a really good first boss. And the only reason why I like this one better than Phantom Knight is because it felt like there was just a lot going on. I love the battle arena. I love like the tactile feel of slicing the vines. And then when you actually slice the thorn plant, it's just a very satisfying kill, especially at the very end. It just feels like perfect the way you slice it in half like you're cutting up paper. I don't know. It's just something that really made me enjoy fighting it every single time. It has the really cool, you know, counter attack as you jump over the wave that it shoots on the ground. I really like this boss battle. Number nine, we have the Dark Cowboy. Now this one is also a simple boss battle and it's still a really fun one. You have to hit him three times with barrels that he'll eventually shoot out of his gun. But you also have to watch out for his little bullets that he'll shoot as well because sometimes your barrel can bounce off of them. So you have to know the right time to throw the barrel. And then you grab him with the lasso and chuck him into the background somewhere which once again is a very satisfying kill. And also he has phases where he'll try to charge at you and attack you as well. And it just felt like for a boss battle that wasn't the main one of the floor, it still was a really good, well flushed out one. Number eight, we have the Projector Cat, which is the first main boss on this list, um, but the third one you'll actually fight in this game. Now, I love the whole aesthetic of it being a Projector Cat. That, that's pretty cool, and the whole nameplay and everything is awesome. And you're on this little set, kind of like Tom and Jerry, where this little mouse will come out, and you hit the mouse, and he turns into a mouse bomb. Your job is to guide this bomb around the room and not let it get destroyed by the cat, because at the very end, you need it to be placed in the middle of the stage in order for it to fly up in the air and blow up the cat's face, 
place, where then it will drop its purple orb. It's kind of unique of a boss battle, kind of playing keep away, until I realized that, yeah, you can just hit the paws of the cat. So you can just stand in the middle of the room, and every time his paw will come down, you just hit the paw. You don't have to guide the bomb all the time. You can just move it around when you need to, and then smack his paws out of the way, which does make the fight extremely easy, especially considering the fact that his attacks, like his tails, and sometimes his paw swipes, don't even do damage. It just bumps the bomb out of the way, and it's very easy to center it back in the middle of the room. So, yeah, unfortunately, I felt like this one was kind of boring. Now, at number 7, we move on to the first major boss of this game being Disco Wing, which is a giant disco ball bird who's flying through the air and laying disco ball eggs that you have to then shoot up into the air and knock them out of the sky, which does require some good timing, and I felt like this one was very satisfying and fun to play as well. There's also situations where he'll flip the stage upside down and also try to physically attack you with things like rolling his disco ball at you or bouncing it around the room, but yeah, once again, this one was just very satisfying satisfying to take out, and I actually had a lot of fun with this boss battle. Next up at number 6, we have Dark Figure Skater. Now, I actually really love the ice skating levels, and I feel like these boss battles was really the best that they could have done with something like ice skating. How do you have a boss battle with ice skating? Well, they actually did so in a really cool way. It's almost like you were having a skate-off against this guy, where eventually he would get dizzy, and you'd have to spin him around in order to plop him on the ground, where all the fleets would then fly around the ring, where you had to go collect them before he picked them up, and then eventually circle around him in the center of the stage, completely destroying him for some reason. But at the very end of the game, you had to fight him once again in order to let out the Sparkla, and in order to do so, you once again had to chase him around the stage as he's spinning, dodging all of his attacks and the falling debris from the ceiling, and then eventually grabbing him, dropping him on the ground, and then going through all the patterns on the floor in order to spin and jump your way into unlocking the Sparkla from her cage, and then eventually circling the skater in order to once again defeat him. For an ice skating boss battle, I really liked the final one as well, and I feel like there was a lot going on. It kind of puts you against everything that you have learned and everything that you have played through so far in the other two previous ice skating stages, and I really like this. And for a boss battle with ice skating, they did a great job. Now we are down to our final five. And at number five, we have the final main boss of the game before getting to the final boss, which is the Spot Lion. Now, Spot Lion was actually really interesting because it utilized a really cool stage gimmick where things would bounce around the stage. He would shoot these orbs at you and you'd have to reflect them back at him and hit him with three orbs in order to knock him out. And I was actually having a lot of fun with this, just chucking orbs around the room and seeing if they would hit him. In a way, it kind of reminded me of the Phantom Ganon boss battles or Ganondorf from the end of Ocarina of Time where you had to, you know, reflect his orbs at him in the Dead Man's Volley game. Uh, so yeah, I had a blast with this, especially when he had duplicates and you had to find unique ways to bounce them off the wall. Yeah, this was a fun boss battle for sure. And just like with the other main bosses of the game, it's just so incredibly satisfying to break these bosses apart and listen to the pieces just shatter and clank as they fall to the ground. It's just such a great feeling. Coming in at number four, we have King Knight, which is the final boss battle for the Knight variant in this game. King Knight will test everything that you have learned with Sword Fighter Peach, and it will place you in various situations based on the prior two bosses that you've already fought, with the Thorn Plant and obviously the Phantom Knight. Yes, you have to dodge his attacks in a very similar fashion by jumping over them, and then you'll fling him to one of the back walls on the sides of the stage, which is also a very satisfying thing. Yes, fighting him might be as simple as jumping over attacks, but it's just fun to do, and I can't explain it unless you try it out for yourself. For phase two, he'll actually try to shoot shockwaves across the ground like Thorn Plant twice that you have to jump over, and in the final phase, he'll have a little trick up his sleeve. Like Phantom Knight, he'll actually disappear and reappear in a different direction, and you have to not fall for the first one in order to jump over the real one, which is actually pretty cool. Like I said, this is not a difficult boss battle by any means, but it shows you don't need to have a difficult boss for it to just be a lot of fun. But also, once you save the Sparkler, there's one more attack that you can do at the very end with your Sparkler in hand, where you guys both slash him to death, and it's just an amazing looking scene. I mean, just watch this thing. Coming down to our final three, at number three, we have Light Fang. 
everything just works for me with this boss battle. It's not like the others in the sense that you're not just attacking this boss. Instead, you have to go around kind of a little stage and you have to kind of sneak around because if he spots you for too long, you'll eventually take damage and he'll rewind time, placing you back to where you started. Your job is to reach the little light bulbs scattered throughout the stage in order to take him out or stun him in different situations. There's even some broken walls that you'll hide behind and he can still attack you by swiping his tail straight down where you have to move out the way or swiping it across the stage where you have to jump over it. And I feel like there's a lot of variety in this stage, including little snake enemies that will also appear to try to hit you. And at the very end, there's really no wall. You have to go through his light, letting him see you and barely at the last second hit the light switch, which gets your blood pumping and gets your heart racing. But it is such a fun boss battle and the music to me just felt like it felt perfect here with this boss battle. The boss theme works great for every boss, but this one just felt a little bit more perfect than the others. I can't explain it, but just, just like listen. Now, I never thought I'd place a boss battle based around a quick time event to be at the number two spot in a boss ranking. But the Dark Kung Fu Master bosses are so much fun and they're full of just like cinematic joy. I just smiled during the entirety of these fights and just because they're just literally time button presses doesn't mean it can't be fun. I mean I had a blast with these, just kind of deflecting his punches and kicks at the same time and just hitting him with flurries of punches and kicks in the first battle. In the second battle he turns into Ryu and has orb attacks where you have to kick and deflect them right back at him which was also a lot of fun because there was different timed presses that you had to look out for. He throws some slower and some faster, and he'd also have multiple hits where you had to deflect multiple different attacks at once. And then the final battle will have you fighting clones of himself, where you'll go back and forth from fighting the ones on the left and the right, and there was even some attacks where you had to jump and attack in order to block them. Like I said, it's a pretty basic way to fight a boss battle, but man did I have so much fun with these. Not to mention in the end, you can team up with the Sparkla in order to both fight him as you both just kind of whoop his butt and kick him into the back wall. It's just so satisfying. And of course, you knew it. Number one is going to be Madam Grape, and then eventually Grape the Grape. Great. Now, of course, you get to turn into Radiant Peach here, where you're flying through the air like a powerful Rosalina figure, where you're just blasting Madam Grape with tons of power orbs. Your job is to shoot these sparks at her, but also dodging her minions that are surrounding her and blocking the fire. You also have to watch out for the attacks on the stage that you're on, because flares will pop up and trains and planes will fly across the stage, so you have to move up, down, left, and right in order to dodge everything and also fire at Madam Grape. It's a cool like shoot him up in a weird 2D platformer sort of way and I really liked it. And then at the end you'll fly up to the top of the room and just keep blasting her in the face with spark powers, eventually defeating her in the process. Then you'll have to move on to phase 2 where you'll fight a horrendous Grape the Great which is a very creepy version of her. She will fire different lasers and orbs at you and it's your job to blast your laser at her mask until eventually you chip it and break it apart. This boss battle really doesn't have that much difficulty, but I love the whole design of it. It's almost like she turns into a giant amphitheater outside, and you can see the giant vortex in the sky, and it's just so creepy for a Princess Peach game. It feels like the end of a Kirby game. Yeah, it's like you're at a live concert, and you're just blasting the concert. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, come on. Just watching this, you can tell it's no secret why this boss battle was number one on my list. It's not only extremely cinematic in a beautiful battle scene, but also just crazy how the gameplay works, where Peach is literally just blasting lasers at this creature. Eventually, Peach will fly up into the air once again, but this time turning herself into like a human missile or torpedo, where she'll blast from the sky and land straight into this ominous black hole of Grape the Great, eventually obliterating her completely. And that is all 13 of the bosses in Princess Peach Showtime ranked. 
Let me know what your favorite boss in the game was and what was your least favorite, or just give me your whole list of boss rankings down below. Also, make sure you leave a like and subscribe before you head out. We're trying to reach 300,000 subscribers, so you can definitely help us do so. But thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you all on the next one. See you guys.